Good evening, folks. This is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy. We're on the start of the week session in the Forex Trading Room for August 16th of 2020. We will be going through our standard and prior week's results, our currency strength meter for the week and the month, the calendar of announcements scheduled for the week, a look at the pairs on the daily charts, any setups we see in progress, and a few words in conclusion. Ledgers, uh, the long-term account is slightly down for the week on account of a couple of losing trades closed out, uh, but we also have two trades open right now, which are carrying profits. So those are longer term, again, long-term account. So all in all, this account is actually doing quite well for the year. Moving on to the intermediate, not as pretty a story. We are significantly down. We have been down for the last couple of months on this account, but again, the uh, bleeding seems to have stopped. Uh, we're just waiting to catch a good trend to take us into uh, a recovery, first of all, and of course, higher highs. Not the first time it's happened, not the last time it's happened. And last but not least, a short-term account had a small drawdown this week as well. There were more losing trades than winning, though we did catch a couple of good trades on uh, Euro JPY and Euro dollar towards the end of the week, but it wasn't enough to turn it around still. We have been coming off several weeks of improvement, so again, this is a work in progress. Notes and opportunities for improvement. This was a much quieter week than the last couple of weeks. Some trending is still happening, but we're also seeing retracements and a bit of a sideways action. Uh, the market is in a very precarious condition, again, based on um, global events uh, going on, the uh, COVID pandemic, the uh, political uncertainty in the U.S. as we go into our presidential elections. There's still rioting happening on the West Coast and in some other cities. So again, not the uh, prettiest time for the U.S., but again, the entire world is uh, sort of facing its own issues right now. So the real question is going to be which economy comes out on top after everything has finished falling down. Uh, as I said, civil unrest continues in the U.S., and Biden, who is running against Trump, has picked a running mate. So we are getting into the final stretch of the election right now. Oil, silver, and gold continue to do very well. They are holding on to their gains. In some cases, like silver and gold, significant gains in the last month or so. And again, this is just a reflection of the uncertainty we see in the market as money starts moving into safe havens like the commodities, bullion, and whatnot. And uh, last but not least, as I keep mentioning, our live event has been fully rescheduled. We're now going live on September 30th through October 2nd in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Details for sign up are on the website. And of course, if you have any questions, do let me know. Our relative strength meter for the past month and the past week, if you'll focus on the two rightmost columns, the last one is the monthly. We can see that uh, silver has been having a stellar month. It's up almost 8% for the month. On the weekly, it did have a retracement last week. And even with that significant retracement, it's still up close to 8% for the month. We did have some movement out of uh, some of the pairs, notably the Australian uh, crosses uh, did somewhat well, uh, Aussie JPY, Aussie New Zealand. We had CAD JPY almost at 2% and Euro JPY at 1.27%. The yen uh, did a, uh, a bit of a, a backslide this week, uh, losing ground against uh, multiple currencies out there, some of which we took advantage. And I am expecting, however, dollar weakness to be in the cards, especially as we go into our election cycle and all the other events keep playing out. So we are already shorting the dollar on the long-term account, not looking for a quick gain, but looking rather for a very significant gain over a longer period of time. Fundamental announcements scheduled for this week is a pretty light week. We have the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia's meeting minutes tomorrow evening, 9.30. We will be trading that one live for our evening session. 
will be starting later than usual. Then on Wednesday at 2 p.m., we have the FOMC minutes coming out of the Fed. So we will be starting our afternoon session a little bit earlier than usual to accommodate for that. Other than that, there's not much happening. Uh, we do have the monetary policy meeting accounts coming out of the European Central Bank. But I normally don't trade that one because it doesn't tend to move the market much. But more importantly, it's at a very inconvenient time of the day for me. 7.30 a.m., I am usually sound asleep. I do stay up till the wee hours of the morning trading the European and Asian markets. So that would cut into my sleep time and I do need my beauty sleep. So I will pass on that one. But uh, of course, you are all free to trade any or all of these announcements as they come out, depending on your personal and individual schedules. With that, we move into the charts. Um, commodities, as I mentioned, oil has had significant gains. I don't know if we can call them gains, rather recovery after the, uh, the dismal first quarter of the year where uh, oil just crashed, uh, coming actually into negative territory for a while. And then since May onwards has been staging quite a nice recovery, which has started flattening. So it has plateaued around the 40, 42 level which is where it's been hanging out. It's still rising, just rising much slower. And of course, it is susceptible to a pullback just like anything else. But for now, I think we can see that oil has uh, achieved a new price range and is probably going to be staying there for a while. Uh, the experts, uh, talking heads and all that in the financial markets are saying that oil will be recovered even more between now and the beginning of next year. But again, too soon to tell, and the experts have been wrong before. Moving on to the currencies, euro dollar on your screen. We can see that the euro dollar had a, um, a bullish week, but again, it didn't get close to the prior level of resistance, certainly didn't do a breakout, rather went back up to a previous price range. Uh, it ended the week at a, a little bit over 118. And we're still waiting for either a break of resistance so we can continue trading it up or a break of support and we'll just as cheerfully trade it down. For now, it, it has gone into a holding pattern. And this is one of the examples of what I meant as a beginning of a sideways market when we did the first few charts in this presentation. Uh, pound dollar, same thing. It, it seems to have achieved a new price range and is hanging out, waiting for the next thing to push it in either direction. Uh, USDJPY, and I mentioned the uh, the yen pairs. Uh, the yen had a very bad week, so it weakened it mentioned pretty much every currency out there. It did stop some around Wednesday and started trying to head back down. We did enter a long-term trade going short on this pair, looking for a uh, trip to the bottom. That will take a while to play out. It may even go up before that, but so long as it stays below the Ichimoku cloud, which you can see on your screens in this region. I'm not sure if it's visible uh, in the video, but um, it's right here where I'm moving my mouse. So long as that resistance is maintained, we'll probably be looking at at least a test of the outer trend line. And if we're lucky, it might go all the way to previous price range at around 100. USD Canadian has been uh, trending down for quite a while. It crested back in March and since then has gone sideways for a while, then does a significant drop, goes sideways for another while and keeps repeating that pattern. Um, we are looking at going short on the USD CAD and uh, trend line down. And again, this is all on the back of uh, dollar weakness or expected dollar weakness. USD Swiss, same thing, has gone down all the way to a new low, um, or a new recent low, I should say. It has been lower in the past, but not in the visible portion of this chart. And we're waiting for a break of the bottom or a retracement. Either one will be a good trade. Aussie dollar, another one that has achieved new highs um, and, and plateaued. It started going sideways, so we're waiting for it to break in either direction. Another example of the sideways nature of the prior week. Kiwi dollar did a trip back to the outer trend line, seems to have found support there, 
And uh, another one where we're waiting for it either to bounce and start going up again or to break that trend line and give us an entry for a short. All the Canadian bouncing between support and resistance for the better part of a month now. And yet another one where we're waiting to see if we get a break of resistance at the top or a break of support and a trip to a lower level. Either one will be a good trade. Euro Swiss decidedly sideways and for more than a week now with a pretty wide range of movement. So we can see some very long candles there in that uh, most recent sideways pattern. It is in the middle of a wedge right now and it is in a pretty good position at the same time. It's pretty much at the middle of the chart. So either way it breaks, it could give us a nice opportunity to trade it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom, and of course, perhaps even beyond. Euro pound, we're trading this one up, looking for it to rejoin the trend line on the intermediate term account, but it has been sideways for the better part of three weeks now. So it is still trying to head in our direction, but it's doing so very sluggishly. Um, no real movement for the past few weeks. I have to wait and see if we catch a break this week or at any point in the future. This is a longer term trade, even though it's on the intermediate, so we will allow it time to evolve. Euro JPY, this is uh, one of the breakouts from the week. And again, it's a yen pair. So the yen, as we can see, decidedly not a good week. Uh, we'll have to see how this week begins to see whether we want to trade this one up or if it's going to start retracing and give us an entry towards support. Either one will be good. Euro Canadian following a uh, trend line, I'm diverging a little bit. It's uh, pretty much caught in a wedge between resistance and support. So another one where we're waiting to see which way it breaks. Pound JPY, uh, we went long on the pound JPY. I think we're still carrying profit on that trade. It does look like it's um, searching for, uh, for those uh, resistance points above it. And again, this on the back of the yen weakness last week. And another one we'll have to keep an eye on as the week begins. Aussie JPY flat below resistance. So we're waiting for that break in either direction. Euro New Zealand, another one looking to break out. I think there is a better chance of a pullback, giving us an opportunity to trade it back down into the low 170s than for it to continue going higher. But again, we don't trade my opinions we trade whatever the charts are doing. So if it does break resistance, we will be going in long, but I'm very eager to see it turn around as I think that will provide a better opportunity. Pound Canadian um, going in, in all directions really has been um, bearish for the past couple of weeks, um, but again, does some very, very significant movements every now and then. So have to be careful with this when it's inside a wedge. So technically, we would be waiting for a break in either direction, but there's quite a distance between where it is right now and both the top and the bottom of that wedge. And last but not least, our pound Swiss has been very flat, very sideways for the past three plus weeks. So nothing here for us until we do see a little bit of light come back to it. That is it for the charge setups we see in progress. No changes. Uh, coronavirus remains the, um, the key factor. Um, this past week, New Zealand, which had gone 100 days without a new COVID case, has now reported a bunch of them in one of their cities. So, so much for that. So uh, New Zealand is facing a second wave, as is pretty much the rest of the world. Um, so that's the bigger factor of the coronavirus. And of course, in the U.S., you have multiple things going on, the virus, the economy, the riots, the election cycle. And uh, well, I, I don't think you need much more than that. Um, so that's where we are right now. I don't expect the coronavirus to go um, off stage anytime soon. So that will continue to be the main factor. And that's it for the presentation. A few words in conclusion, and I always try to pick something that's been on my mind for, for the past week. And as most of you know who have been with me for a while, 
Uh, Forex trading is not the only thing I do. I have our real estate ventures. I have service companies that support these real estate ventures. I have a bunch of things going on. There's always a risk to having all your eggs in the same basket. So diversification is what you should be looking for. And it's even riskier if you don't own the basket. So if you depend on the job, then you're depending on something that might disappear at any moment and which you never ever control. When I quit my job a few years ago, I depended entirely on trading for my income. That's not a good thing. One bad year and I would have been in a very tight spot. As soon as I could, and thanks to the trading profits, I started investing in other things like the real estate I, I just mentioned for passive income. And then I had two baskets. After a while, I had three baskets. I have many more baskets than that right now. So if any of them go away, I'm really not concerned because the rest of them continue to be very, very good sources of income. In other words, I won't even notice if one day trading goes away or rent stop coming in on the properties or whatever. There's other things to pick up the slack. Now, this doesn't happen from one day to the next. It didn't happen for me from one day to the next. So you have to be patient, but you should have your goals. Your end game should be to have multiple sources of income. That's pretty much what I specialize in, though I basically teach uh, Forex trading. I, I, don't, I, I just don't have the time to teach the other stuff, but um, food for thought. Uh, look into other things that you can do so that once you have significant profits from trading, you stop relying on that, on that one thing. Or if you're still relying on the job and trading, well, the sooner you can get rid of the job, which will give you back your time, all the better. So that's my question for the week. How many baskets do you have right now? And that's going to be it for our start of the week uh, on August 16th of 2020. Do I have any comments or questions from me? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we will be back tomorrow. Again, check your schedules on the emails. We will be starting late tomorrow on account of an announcement. And uh, all the information will be there in the update that will go out very shortly. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a great week.